right, here we go. Headers on, headers rebuilt. A lot of maintenance done. It's been busy. It's hot, but I think the crop's ready. Let's throw it out to the field. Let's uh, do a test cut. Let's see if wheat harvest is ready to kick off. Winter wheat up first. Here we go. We're combining. So this is winter wheat and uh, it's in a very rough field. I think my dad last year was seeding in this particular one and he was having issues with the air drill bunching up with straw. So it's left little clumps all over and so it's like driving over a washboard mess. But with that said, it's running about 15 bushels an acre. Less than I was hoping. I, I thought this would be in the 20s. So it's a little disappointing, uh, but it's better than the peas. <laughs> so that's encouraging. And I don't have to cut as low as the peas. I believe I've got this header dialed in. Um, that new cutter bar is amazing. I go up to like six, six and a half miles an hour and it still cuts it off nice and clean. But I did bend one guard already, so that's depressing. But things are moving along. Dad's combine's having a little bit of issues, so he's getting that figured out. And he'll be back here shortly. But let's get her going. I've got like 15 acres harvested of the winter wheat. We got about 1,500 to go. Stay with me. I think it's time we do a moisture check. This is a portable moisture sensor. It'll give me a very accurate reading. And then I can use this to calibrate the combine's moisture sensor so that it's in tune. And then we get a better instant reading as I'm in here in the, the city. But I have not calibrated this combine since we got out of peace. So let's go get some samples, find out what that is, and then uh, put it in the combine. So, first thing I like to do is stick my arm in it. It's hot, it's 95 degrees out. So, I mean, that heat's been absorbed in there. Second thing I like to do is look at the colors. I am seeing some green berries, very tasty. Green berries mean high moisture, we don't want that. We want it to be nice and hard and crunchy. But, there's a lot of it that is ripe here, so it should blend down. The bin we're putting this in does not have forced aeration, so we gotta be careful. Look at some samples. I left peas in there. Whoops. Hard red winter. That's exactly what I want right there. And test. Testing. And the verdict is 11.8% moisture. 87 degrees Fahrenheit, it's a little cooler than I thought it'd be. All right, let's do a couple more samples. So 11 eighths the benchmark so far. Twelve two. Not a little wetter. Twelve percent. So out of the average of that, I'd say three tests, twelve percent moisture, ninety-two degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Well, it's ready. Um, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit drier, but let's keep combining. This will go in the bin. It'll be okay. It'll cool down. On the bright side, we are cutting winter wheat. On the bad side, it is hot outside. Oh my goodness. It is brutal. Dusty, dirty, icky. Yeah, I just spent two hours and I didn't get it on a camera because, well, it was just not very fun to record if I wanted to. I'm trying to diagnose a problem with my dad's combine. He kept blowing fuses and his GPS wouldn't work and his moisture sensor and his flow sensor and his positioning sensor for his steer axle and a few other things were not working. So we were trying to diagnose him that. And he's been having some problems along. Well, it just kept popping fuses, popping fuses, and going through all the harness and everything. We found it. That's all that matters, I think. Well, I should say we found it. I'm pretty sure we got it figured out. 
It was a wire that got pinched up above on the grain tank that was rubbing on metal and I think it was short now right there because that makes logical sense, you know, when the wire is cut and uh, short now. But dad's back out cutting, Nick's been cutting for a little bit and the truck's full so let's grab the other truck. late one for us we're shutting down though so i'm just idling her out while i'm dumping into the truck just got it all dialed in and calibrated it's yielding better than i thought because the yield monitor was way off so now that i got it calibrated it's better about 20 22 that's better all right see you guys tomorrow well i'll tell you what all that work putting all those parts these combines the new rash bars the new modules feeder chains all that good stuff it's paying off i uh my loss indicators are about nothing, and uh, my sample is excellent. So this is great. All right, this combine's running really good. I've, I'm very happy with the outcome. So I hope it stays this way the whole season. You know, new parts definitely have sharper edges, so threshing is easier. As stuff gets a little more, a little more rounded, metal gets uh, slowly eroded off surfaces. You lose some of that threshing ability, but overall, it was long overdue and it's just going to make this year a little bit less of a hassle fighting this if i had an automation uh combine setup like a 250 series it would configure a lot of this way farther than more advanced than i ever could and it would it'd be able to match the crop settings but at least new iron can make up for the lack of uh adjusting skills so i'm happy we're good if you look closely right here <laughs> For Harrison, Montana. I'm right there. Dad's over on this side. Uh, this is Montana field, we call it. It just so happened to be a field that's shaped like Montana. There's outcrop, oops, I'm tapping. Outcropping, so there's ground over here that's no good. You can't farm it. And the way it just kind of curves in and out looks like Montana. And it's running an average of 22 bushels an acre. Now I got the whole uh, the whole uh, system calibrated correctly. So that's good. We're, uh, we're moving right along. I am also very full. Oh boy. Okay. There's gonna be grain coming off here soon. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's nice having an egg cam up there. You can, uh, you can get a good idea of how full you really are. So a combine harvester, that's what I'm in right now. Absolute marvel of a machine. It's amazing how they've come over the years. And they're just, every year, it seems like a new advancement comes out in them. My, don't mind the trickle of weed over here. That's, that's for the birds. Uh, the purpose of a combine, obviously, is to reap the seeds, to remove the seeds from the plants so you can take them and then use them for milling and turn them into bread and cereals and whatever else, you know, you're making. Hummus, if it's chickpeas, corn, you know, corn starch. There's all kinds of stuff. So with that said, there's also other purposes of these combines that they're doing right now that you don't realize they're spreading the material. So there's a lot of plant material that's consumed by the combine to get access to those seeds. 
Well, you've got to be able to disperse that properly on the ground, otherwise it's going to get in the way when you come to seed the next year and you want it to decay properly, so you want it. So there's, there's a chopper in the back that's actually, the purpose is to mulch up and destroy and make fine particles of the plant material, that's not the seeds. And then there's spreaders in the back that then spread that out across the width of the header, which is 45 feet in this circumstance. So with all that said, these combines do quite a bit. It's pretty amazing. They're fun to run too. They're not as fun to work on though. There's a lot of gear, a lot of wrenching, and um, that's just the reality of it. Now, if you're harvesting corn and you don't have a header that's dragging the ground, there's a lot less wrenching. If you're harvesting really nice wheat that's tall, there's a lot less wrenching. But we live in an area where there's a lot of wrenching because rocks, they like to break stuff. First broken section on the new sickle. Only made it two days. <sighs> I knew it was gonna happen. Okay, just checking in. Uh, you can make sure you guys know that uh, I do work sometimes. Uh, me and Kobe. All right, we have now moved on to winter wheat. Um, started cutting yesterday afternoon on uh, our winter wheat and uh, we're cutting on the field we call Montana. Uh, if you've ever seen a map of uh, our farm, uh, the very east area of our farm there's a chunk of land that looks like the, our state. So we're, uh, if we're cutting it, um, you know it's been yielding anywhere from 15 to 25 in some of the thick areas. I think maybe averaging 20 um it's ripe it's ready to roll uh so it's nice to be back in the field and harvesting we've had really good weather far as harvest it's been dry and hot and it looks like it's going to stay that way for the next week so but we're um we're rolling along uh combine's running fairly smoothly got a few bugs worked out um last night um and uh it's it's uh, running fine so anyway yeah we'll have uh, another about five six days well actually longer because there's some of the winter wheat that didn't come up very well and it's got quite a few weeds in it and green so we'll be chewing on that later but anyway here's uh nick so we're cutting the last of this uh strip we probably have uh, another round and back and then uh, we'll finish up and then move uh, back closer to the farm, actually about a half mile. We're about six miles away from the place, uh, from our uh, shop. Uh, so this is the farthest we go east. So anyway, um, it won't be, it's getting close to lunchtime. Yeah, and uh, I've got a little surprise for Kobe. Um, yeah, did you hear your name? Did you hear your name? Yeah. All right, dog days of summer. Oh man, 
there's like a freak storm right now. Came down like hail. A little bit of hail, but now it's just like soaking wet. My camera's on top of the bin. Oh, wow. I came out of nowhere. Oh, I'm drenched. All right, let's get in the truck. Oh, wow. That was miserable. I didn't think it was gonna rain today. Oh man, I came out of nowhere. Just finished up in the 9370 and a little bit of hail came down. I'm like, okay, all right, let's park the truck behind the bins. And then I had to run up to the top of the bin and get my camera because there was a time lapse going on. And then all of a sudden, bam, it's mud everywhere. And I'm heading down with the pickup to go get my dad and my brother. They're not, they're still cutting actually, <laughs> but it is muddy. I think we're done cutting for today because I can't get into the bin site. I'm just gonna tear the snot out of it and uh, with those big trucks. Oh man, that was, that was fun. It was brutally hot today. And I got a nice little bath to cool me down. And now I feel like, uh, well, I feel like a wet cat. Well, we are uh, <laughs> shutting down. Big thunderstorm just clipping us. It is coming down hard about a quarter mile that way. And I'm probably gonna get hit harder in a second. So I got the truck tarped, I got a full load of grain, and I can't close it, so it's just gonna get rained on. Dad's coming over his, a little bit of lightning, maybe some hail, but uh, we're gonna have to shut down harvest for a little bit. So, that's okay. Leg arm's coming to pick us up. Oh yeah, here it comes. So much for my flag. I don't know if that's gonna stay on. I guess we'll have to get a new one tomorrow. Oh boy. Poor things. They are whipping. A little bit of pea hail coming down. That's nasty. Oh, hail. White combine. That's so hard to listen, it just held the truck.
in the combine, I can't get out. As you can see, uh, there's a little bit of hail. So far, it's not bad. Uh, but the wind's blowing up to about 40 miles an hour. Well, that was unexpected. Yesterday there was no chance of rain. Then they uh, said 20% this afternoon and 40 tonight. And I think they missed the 100% hail. Oh, hail. Not again. That's uh, it's getting old. Smells good. It smells very fresh. Mixture of fresh wheat, harvest, a little bit of water, and some ice. Oh, I hope this didn't hail the rest of our crops. I think it went over a chunk of it. Third hail on this land. Third hail of the year. There's a lot up north that hasn't seen hail yet, and this just went over it. We'll know more soon. I guess we need to get insurance to some of that. Wow. What a year. What a year. I'm going to have to learn to adjust my combine. I think... I think my sieves must be open too much. Oh, I know it'll end sometime. Just isn't doing it yet. All right. Okay, we'll catch you on a drier day. All right, it's done. Let's go see what's happening out here. Leg arms brought the pickups, so he's waiting for us. Old Glory survived. That's good. That's really good. Um, Tastes like hail. One of the weirdest sensations after a thunderstorm like this, the hail coming down, is you get a gust of hot air that hits you and immediately freezing cold air. Let's take a look at our hopper here. <laughs> Anyone want to order some grain and hail? Smells really good. <sighs> Gotta look on the bright side. I haven't smelt wet grain, freshly harvested with a little bit of hail on the top in a long time. That smells terrific. Oh. <laughs> um, There's gonna be a bunch of water in that gear box. There's grain in here, but I think it's must water out. Don't worry, Kobe was in the combine. I'm sure some of you are thinking that right now, typing a combine, like how could you leave him out there in the hail? He wasn't. It, oh yeah, it's huge. It shattered. There's a lot of shatter in it. Oh yeah. The grain on the ground. I'd say that this is right through here is 50% or more. Yeah. And this isn't insured either. Yeah. Well, I don't know. This one is on this side. Okay. It yeah, the, it got hit pretty good. 50% uh, at least, like that was saying. There was some decent wheat here too. I'd have to look to see. And this stuff got hit earlier in the year when it wasn't insured. There's a pretty good chance the insurance that we bought won't cover this. So, 